We are live at 11.05 and uh, NBC, Spirit Cars. Uh, we're going to keep this one short and sweet. I've been uh, working on a 32.5 window project, got my focus today, but we're still at Kevin's car. It's coming together pretty good. Um, I think Josh just titled this one uh, Wiring 101, so I'm going to talk a little bit about wiring. Uh, I'll try to just throw in um, a couple tips that'll that'll be handy. That's been the goal of this show is to just kind of uh, not tell you how to do it, but show you how we do it. I say it often, and I'll keep on saying it. There's no one right way to do it, um, but there are wrong ways to do it. So let's try to do it the right way here in that neighborhood, and it uh, it saves a lot of time rather than backing up to redo something. Just go ahead and keep moving forward on your build. So I got a wiring kit. I like to do a wiring kit. Um, Spirit, again, we reference everything to what Spirit does. So we use the easy wire and uh, the columns we use, we use the uh, Flaming River Flaming River column and we have a, an easy wire kit here. So Flaming River's column in the column itself for the turn signals and everything it has a GM plug and when you use a GM plug they're always the same uh, sometimes with the Ford and, and the Chrysler's the wiring codes are a little bit different so these will just plug into a into a, a plug these plug into it and then this will plug into your steering column so we take that direction when we do turn keys here you don't have to do it that way you can wire different you can wire your turn signals separate but uh, this is set up for um, a plug to go into a column that's got a turn a key in the column. So if you use, uh, and we used to do it a lot, uh, some of the old, older style columns out of the GMs, you can get a tilt and everything else, and you can use that. But on our column, it's a two inch um, OD on the tube, so we use a two inch pipe, an ID, and we can just slide that in and get that going. So I've got my wiring kit. Basically it's kind of loomed up. Spend a little time thinking about how you want to, what you want to have, how you want to run it. Um, are you going to use, I'm just thinking brakes, we use all the time, we use a uh, pressure switch for our brakes, which is down along the frame just to the back of, um, so if you're sitting in the driver's seat here, it'll be over here, where your wire's coming down out of this kit are going to be two short wires, uh, orange and a yellow wire, that would come down to a, a mechanical switch that your brake pedal would push in. We don't use that, we just add some wires, come down around, and go to the back. I like to split my headlights. So rather than run both wires down one side and come across for the headlights, I'll go ahead and split my headlights right here. So when I come across, and I run one left side down the left side and right side down the right side. If we're going to have turn signals, think about that. If you're going to have turn signals and running lights, a lot of times we'll just do turn signals on a uh, on a T bucket. Um, you got your fan. Are you going to run your fan full time when the switch is on, or do you want to run your fan off of a you know a ground switch on the motor for uh, turns on with the temperature of the motor? But that at that point it stays on when the motor's still warm when you turn the key off. So make those kind of decisions. You got, uh, are you gonna have a radio? If you have a radio, you'll need a constant wire and you'll need a, a on-off switch wire. These come with it. Where are you gonna put your radio? Is the radio gonna be under the dash? Is the radio gonna be under the seat? Um, I could probably name off about 20 other things. Do you got a third brake light or no third brake light? Think about all that before you start. Just. Get in your mind what you want to have and where it's going to be on the car. So it's a whole lot easier. I'll get me a seat and I'll sit here with a little bit bigger table and I'll have all my gauges. Since this is 101, I'm just going to get you started. Uh, next few days I'll be putting this together. Even though this is already a loom, I'm going to have a, a tighter loom that will go and I'll have two wires or one set of wires come out the left side go down the frame, I'll have one set of wires come down the right side, go down the frame, so I'll have the starter wire and the, the coil and the tack if it's got one or all those kind of things come down the right side and the horn and the uh, 
the electric fan and you know lights and all that down the left side for the left side of the car. I'll take my uh, uh, wire loom for the back that's going to go for them tail lights, and you know pink would be your um, for your fuel sending unit, and take that down all the bat down the left side. Remember, you got a, a power you got to bring up from your battery, connect it to the uh, um, starter. This is something. Here's a tip you might want to remember. I'm going to point out two or three tips, and I'll put a star by it, so you get a star by this one. Uh, your alternator puts a lot of amps out, and it's really not fused. Uh, you can put a fusible link in it, but if I got a hundred amp alternator, and I'm charging that through that alternator through the uh, system here, it's going to go directly to the fuse block, and I got you can see the big thick wire in here. It's going to come from the alternator, and then go from here and charge the system through the battery. And I think it even says it in the directions. If it's 100 amp, don't do it. If it's 80 amp, you can. I say don't do it no matter what. Run your, and this one is, normally we do a, an alternator that would be a low mount over here. Run your wire by itself, separate, run it clean, run it down, however we're going to run it. And you can connect this alternator directly to your battery wire right here. If something, for some reason unknown, it happens to short, you'll smoke that wire, but that wire will be outside the car and uh, it'll smoke your wire. But if you've got that wire in a loom with five or six or eight other wires coming up under your dash, um, you know, it could actually start a fire. It'll smoke all your wires. You'll have one big wad of melted wires and um, so... And maybe a melted car. And maybe a melted fiberglass. Once you get it started, it doesn't start burning easy, but once it starts burning, it burns very thorough, and you'll have just a white shell of fiberglass, but that resin will be gone. Uh, so I'm going to say never, that's my opinion, but never run your alternator wire in through the car. It's not necessary. Run it right to the starter. Your starter's got a big cable. And what we'll do, we'll run that up on, this is a 27, that starter cable will come up and go in the rocker panel and run all the way back and come right up into the battery box which will be mounted down here. So that's kind of wiring 101, um, neat and tidy. Uh, I used to go to the extreme of neat and tidy under the dash where if you looked up there it was just super clean and um, since you don't look at it and it's not judged that way I, I leave it open a little bit more. I still keep the wires bundled in, in, in the direction that they go and come from but uh, just in case you got chased something down, the wires in the Easy Kit are both color coded and it says on the wire what it is, whether it be the left turn signal, right turn signal, high beam, low beam indicator, which are the three wires will, will all be up in your dash. Um, you have your headlights. Remember, when you wire your headlights in, your headlights won't work unless you have the dimmer switch connected. So you need to make sure the dimmer switch, and that's just a plug in on the Easy Kit. Um, some people are just will freak out when it comes to wiring. I don't know how better to describe it. Oh, no, just take it easy. Don't get overstressed. You got it it flows downhill. You could think water flows downhill, electricity flows downhill to the ground. So it's going to start at the positive and always go. It has to end up in the ground to get back. So if if your lights aren't working, always check the ground and, and a ground a bad ground will actually do weird things too it'll it'll affect things that you would never think they would especially in lights and turn signals uh, this is another one I will put a star by this LEDs are coming on real strong when they first came out uh, your flasher is a a capacitor that charges and then discharges and charges and discharges that's what makes your your lights flash well, an LED does not draw enough current to discharge that uh, flasher. Um, they've come a long ways. We used to solder a resistor in. You could even solder a, uh, an existing 1157 light bulb in it to do enough, but um, have this hidden light bulb <laughs> under your car just so you're pulling, pulling the resistor, resistance to make your flasher work. 
Uh, then they started coming up with uh, special flashers that work. Um, but even that, they all weren't working. Some would work better than others, and some had to be grounded, and some didn't. So a lot of the lights coming out now have already got circuitry built into the electronics of the LED to draw the extra current just so the flashers will work. So if you put your whole thing together, you put your lights in, and all of a sudden your flashers are not working, your semi-turn signal don't work, check out the flasher first. You, you can probably just change out the flasher, put an LED flasher in, and it will probably work. And if that doesn't do it, I wouldn't move away from that still being the flasher issue. Uh, just maybe try a different one or something like that. So what do we got? We got two hints on uh, wiring. Can we give them one more hint on wiring? What, what's the number one question you get on wiring? Mm, I get a few trickle charger. A trickle charger, yeah. Uh, on the, yeah, it's a good thing. Or a battery cutoff switch is a good thing too. If, if you've got an issue um, where you want to, your car is going to sit for a long time, uh, there's no reason you can't put a, a cutoff underneath or just disconnect the battery. Uh, you should not have to keep your car trickle charged. I mean, if it's continually got a drain going down, um, if, you, if it's not that bad a deal and you don't want to jack with it, um, and I had the choice between a trickle charger and a, a battery cutoff switch, um, I got a four-wheeler at home that I'm fixing to put a battery cutoff switch on because I'm tired of charging the battery on. So, and I, and I, it ain't worth looking for the it's just a minor draw somewhere. You can come right off of your solenoid right here. Your power, if, you're, if your car ever goes dead on a tea bucket, it's all right here. I mean, it's really the car is nothing but a glorified engine stand. I call it that way a lot of times. Your, your engine is really a focal point. So before we go today, I think my number three hint, and this will be a good one. We use a low car shifter. I like it, nice engineering, tight, everything. I mean, you can you can just hear how tight that thing is shifting and hitting, and it's got a button for locking it so I can go to, but I can't go into reverse. I gotta hit the button to go past. So it's locked into park, very nice. Uh, very adjustable. They do have different kits for um, different cars, but like this General Motors one will fit several different ones. Make sure that it's going to, the shifter itself is going to come up where you want it to come up in the floor. I mean, this could be adjusted in several different ways. Kevin had it adjusted a little bit farther back. Um, I don't know that he had it on the car. He just kind of assembled it, I think. So we got it fitting on the car. We got it where we know we want it to come up from the floor. But now you've got your shifter here, and you've got a body that's got a floor in it, but no hole in the floor. You can... I suppose take the shifter off and set it on top of it and try to mark it from the bottom or however, but that's not going to be very easy. I've got a body mount hold here. I've got a body mount hold here. The 27 is a little harder because you, you won't see these holes. They're pretty far back under the car. But if you just go from these two holes and triangulate it with a measurement, you can draw a straight line across that. You can come across here, make a you know, straight line 90 going that way, you can measure. You can get your rough cut. Don't cut too big, just get a, get a hole big enough to get your shifter down. Especially if it's the first time you've done it. Um, then you can set your body down on here. Your body's on the car. Where it goes, if you've got a spirit car again, um, these holes will be in your body. Um, we build the the car, we put the doors on it on a jig that is the same as a frame, so these all should match. Um, the bolt goes through the top, nut on the bottom. Once it's located there, you could get underneath of it and shave it a little bit. You may need to clean it up in this area a little bit so this, this shifter works. Make sure everything's you know working free. This could be either a real pain to get that hole in the body or not a big deal. So I would say if you measure off the holes, do it that way. Not that big a deal. So Kevin, we're getting there. We talked about brake lines a while ago. Um, I'll just mention them again. A good double flare is very, very important. I know we've had to 
just kind of look at some of these. The brakes weren't bled when we got it, so we have had to redo a couple of lines. No big deal. It's overall a good job here. Um, so Sean is bleeding. I'm not sure if he's done, but I see transfer hydraulic fluid all over the place from brake fluid. Tidy up the motor. Uh, Kevin just decided on what valve covers he wants, so we're going to get the valve covers. We're going to clean, clean. I like everything clean, tight. We're going to make sure that the spark plug wires come down, clean, go through a loom, come down in. Uh, do we decide on a loom or how we're going to do that yet? Or Yeah, he should go ahead with new wires. Okay, so new wires and a loom and get his... People are going to look at your motor. I mean, it's... A good run in motor is important. I mean, you don't want to have to mess around and, and be fiddling with your car constantly and, and not have it run or breaking down or overheating. That's just fundamental. But aesthetics is aesthetics is everything on a T-bucket when it comes to the motor. That's what people are going to see. That's what they're going to remember. That's what they'll comment on. Uh, you just assume it's going to run right. So this has got the alternator up on top. but. Um, when you run your wires up in here, keep them all as much together as you can. Don't have gobs of wire. Keep them clean. Um, make nice bends. I mean, make a good bend. Make a 90s if you can. Clean it up. Make sure all your terminations, whenever, wherever you terminate a wire, make sure those uh, crimps are good. Get a good crimp tool. Worth it. I mean, just get a good crimp tool if you're going to terminate wires. We're... I mean, we're just moving ahead on this car. This one should be coming together pretty quick. You may see a 32.5 window before too long. I've just built the hood for the Model A. I'll probably show that tomorrow or the next day. Um, a couple stages of how to put a hood on. And I think uh, for now, looks like I have one book, so that's the one we're going to read out of. Pass it on. Friend of mine, Ernie, hot rod man. Wrote a couple of these books. I'm sure they're available on Amazon. Ernie Gilcrease. So, <laughs> thoughts are universal puzzle pieces. We might as well build something cool with them. So, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. And once you get your thoughts kind of clear, go for it. And we don't like to back up around here, so hopefully we keep moving ahead. Have a good day.